Are you part of a nonprofit organization, a youth group looking to raise cash for your cause? Stay tuned at the end of this video to learn how you can bring the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation to your town live, featuring the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Boston on Friday, March 30th. It's WWE Live on the road to WrestleMania. For the first time ever at TD Garden, Brock Lesnar, Braun Strowman, and Kane in a Universal Championship triple threat match. And here comes the big dog! Roman Reigns looks to silence Elias in an epic battle. Plus, Seth Rollins and Finn Balor collide one-on-one. -on -one. It's the WWE Live Road to WrestleMania Tour in Boston, Friday, March 30th. Tickets and VIP packages are available. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans from around the corner, around the world, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Insiders. I'm Dan Moraes. And I am John Cena, your host. The host. Wrestling fans, before we get to the news going on in the King of Sports Professional Wrestling, let's check out what's going on here in the Millennium Wrestling Federation. Are you headed to WrestleMania 34 this weekend for the third consecutive year? The Millennium Wrestling Federation will be part of the WrestleCon convention that takes place WrestleMania weekend, Friday, April the 6th through Sunday, April the 8th. John Cena Sr. will be joining us, along with the man that was part of the main event of the very first WrestleMania, Cowboy Bob Orton, along with an individual that held a variety of championships in WWE, a man that's badass to the bone. We're talking about Hardcore Holly. Rounding out our group, a true professional wrestling Hall of Famer, the patriarch of the legendary Henning family, Larry the Axe Henning himself, making an extremely, extremely rare appearance. Between now and March 1st, we have special discount prices on individual tickets and VIP packages. Get yourself a free WWE t-shirt and Bruce Pritchard something to wrestle with drink koozie. Fans that pick up the VIP package itself will also be entered into a free daily merchandise giveaway as our thanks to you. If you can't make it to NOLA, you can still help our efforts bringing you great video content. Order an autographed photo or two using our mail order option. Head on over to the Boston Wrestling dot com super site today to help support independent wrestling all right johnny it's exciting we got wrestlecon coming up in a matter of days wrestlemania weekend we have not one but two huge episodes of memories and legends with tony atlas that are going to be available for free for fans to enjoy the biggest weekend of the year plus we're taking all of our great content johnny all the way back to 2001 and we're bringing it to the world of patreon to try and jazz up this set bring in more Great guests, more big live wrestling events here in New England, not North Carolina. It's an exciting thing. Why did you mention North Carolina? I, you know, North so Carolina is still a very sore subject with me when it comes to you. You know what's going to happen? We have found, thanks to Dr. Reese's psychiatry sessions, we have found uh, peace between us to some extent. But I know once the Millennium Wrestling Federation live events heat up again, I think that tension may build up. But that remains between you and South. North Carolina. Between me and you. Oh, wow, we don't need that. I, I'm at peace with everybody now. Except Red Lobster. Oh, don't ever drink <laughs> ginger ale there. I'll get the food. It's oh. All right, John, we have a question from one of our great fans on Twitter, Kat Lopez. She wants your take on what's gone down with the longest reigning champion in wrestling history of any gender, the fabulous Moolah, who had a WrestleMania battle royal named after her. A match that I think was overdone and not needed. That's a different story for a different time. WWE faced maybe unprecedented backlash from fans on social media due to Moolah's background. And WWE officially pulled the name Fabulous Moolah from this women's battle royal April the 8th in New Orleans at WrestleMania 34. If what they're saying is true yeah. about the Fabulous Moolah. We talked a lot about ifs. There you go. Ifs. You know, there's two sides to every story. Correct. There's yours, there's mine, and then there's the truth. Well really doesn't seem to be because you've got conflicting information. Some say she was super. Some say she was a bitch. Other people say stay away. I think WWE was kind of backed into a corner and had to make a decision. And I think based on the proliferation of information that was coming in in the negative format, I think they just made the decision we're better off just doing it the way they did, removing her name from it completely. And I actually might have almost turned around and put her partner's name on it. 
Well, they just named a tournament after her. Do you think they should overdo it? Well, you know There's what? a lot of great ladies that have contributed to the sport over the years. Yeah, and maybe, they, maybe there was a way, not to interrupt you, but maybe there was a way where they could have taken all these great women and kind of slurred up a nice, you know, name for that, for that, uh, for that match. I, I just think that to lay it on one person, she may have been the first, but she certainly was the meanest. And I think that some of the stuff that's coming in may, in fact, be true. Some may be bitterness. Some may be just idle talk. Well, you know, Johnny, we've been around this a long time. And I have to say, I don't know if all this is true. I wasn't around it. I wasn't there to witness it firsthand. But a situation like this where there are so many, you have to say where there's smoke, there has to be a little bit of fire. To the extent that it's been put out there online, probably not as bad. But as far as nothing, I don't think that's the case either. I think it lies somewhere in between. Uh, I think they picked a bad time to honor Mula, where right now uh, it seems to be the in thing to use social media as a platform to attack anything. Uh, or anyone. Or anyone. Uh, it's tough. You know, Mula certainly contributed a lot to the sport, but if what even a fraction of what these women are accusing her of is true, you know, she certainly isn't someone that should be honored. I agree with that. And, I, I, you know, I'm not... Uh an advocate of putting accolades on individuals. Each person contributed to the sport of professional wrestling. Everybody came forward and did their thing. She'd never let the belt go anyway. So you know what? I think that WWE in the long run has made the best decision, not only for the fans, not only for those women who felt they were abused and used, but for the WWE itself. What's best for business? Well, Mueller apparently used to take a very large percentage of her trainees' paydays. I'd heard some, what I would consider a very, very reliable story about her, not only taking the percentage of the paydays, but when they'd get booked for the WWWF, she'd take their uh, meal money that they were allocated that Mueller would set up in the agreement and pocket it for herself. Well, see, that, to me, that's just selfish, mean, and cruel. And, you know, I understand that Mueller came from a very poor background, worked her way up the ranks to get where she was. But that does not mean that you have to turn around and abuse other individuals to compensate for the deficits you had in your life. You were very, very successful. You were the reigning queen of professional wrestling when it came to women. Why not let others have the light? And again, some of your stuff that you're getting from these people was, if anybody was attempting to be better than Moolah, or better than her, they were restrained, held back, or abused. So you know what? I think WWE in the long run made the right decision, the best decision. And I give the fans of WWE credit for standing up. And the women who were abused and used by this woman, credit and guts to come forward. That's something outstanding. So you know what? Right decision at the right time. You know, Johnny, for the fans that might not be familiar, the fabulous Moolah trained almost every women wrestler of that era. They lived at her home, yep. the Moolah Mansion down in North Carolina. Yep. Uh, and when, once they were ready to go, she would book them in the different territories, and she'd take, again, a large percentage of their pay, and in some cases, even their food and meal money. But beyond wrestling, there were many allegations from women that trained her uh, that she would try and pimp them out to an extent, to send them on these uh, excursions. Ad adult excursions for photo shoots. In a lot of cases, to perhaps set up sexual encounters with different promoters and wrestlers in the territories they work with. So, again, if even a fraction of that is true, that certainly isn't someone that should be on it. And again, you couldn't pick a worse time than in 2018 with the, the lay of the land right now. Even if it wasn't the lay of the land in 2018, facts are facts. If that, in fact, is true... You know what? That's enough. That's enough for me. When you, when you take another human being and sell their body, take part of who they are yeah. and have it abused, to me, there's no excuse for that. I would have, if she was, God rest her soul, alive, and she still had the belt, she'd not have it very long. Well, there were even allegations, Johnny, of something I think you were kind of a, a man that has a deep interest in, of lesbian sex. <laughs> I have no idea. He'd have a laugh if he was what here. What you're right smoking? Now. I, that's not true, fans. I don't know where he gets this stuff. That is not fact. That is not true. There is, I don't there's care. There's been no lesbian sex with the fabulous Mula. Look, no, no, I didn't say that. I don't have an interest <laughs> in lesbian sex. Let's get that straight right now. You know, I'd rather fight than switch. So, so <laughs> women are just fine, and I'm looking forward to New Orleans. 
But I just want to say one thing. I really don't care what her sexual preference was. I don't care what yours... She was married to Buddy Wolf. I don't care what your sexual preference is. Look at we have some great professional wrestlers in this business. Um, who's my, my Afro-American friend down there? That, Aaron Young. Great human you being. You've been a great, great advocate character. for a long, you know long what? before WWE. My oldest son is gay. So you know what? I really don't care about your sexual preference. Whatever you do in life is yours, as long as you hurt nobody. And that's the beginning, and that's the Perfect end. Perfect way to end it, because... That's a power position for someone like a fabulous Moolah that we had the ability to book these ladies out and the ability to not book them out. You know what I mean? Well, you know what? I, I stay away from that kind of stuff because it only causes problems. And what you do in your life is your own business. And who can define love? Love may not be defined between a man and a woman. It could be defined by anyone. Love is a special word. Love means a lot. I'm very proud of my oldest son. I'd stand beside him. Be. I'd be proud to say he is my son. So you know what? I think that the world needs to grow the hell up and face reality. Who are we to decide what's right and what's wrong? Good man. I'll ask you this, Johnny. As someone that was, has been around the world a little longer than me and someone that was a fan of wrestling before you broke into it, do you think it was kind of insulting to the fans that at her very, very advanced age that Mula continued to be the women's champion? She had to have been at least, not including her attitude error run of a couple of weeks when she beat Ivory, but, you know, she had to have been in her 50s when she was holding that title. Do you think it did a disservice to the women's division back then, of a woman of that age? You know what? It's all about business. Yeah. If she was selling tickets and she was making money and putting asses in seats as a promoter, as a Vince McMahon, as somebody working for Impact Wrestling, if the money's coming through the door because she's in the ring, then, you know what? Her age never made her look bad. As she progressed, there were a lot of errors made there. She just shouldn't have ever, ever been back in that ring. You know what? So, but as far as what you're saying, age 50, age is not anything Look at you. You're but pushing a 60. I am. I am. And um, you know what? Please, God, I'm allowed to continue going in that ring until my legs or my body can't take it anymore. And that's just the way it is. So age to me just a number, and as long as she could perform and didn't let or hurt anyone doing it, guess what? Let her have the belt. Did it hold people back? Perhaps. But whose decision was it to keep the belt on her? I don't blame her. I blame the guy that's right in the show. Well, you have to remember that Vince McMahon did not buy the rights to that women's championship belt until the mid-1980s. Up beforehand, up anything before, I think it was 1984, yep. that was all under Moolah's control. That's correct. Okay. Yep. Yep, I understand that. Johnny, this popped into my mind when we talked about how the fans really stepped up on this Mueller issue uh, on social media, maybe too aggressively, maybe just aggressive enough to get the job done. What a, you know what a sticking point to me is, Johnny? The continuation to use the name of the Ultimate Warrior. And let me be clear about this. I think the Ultimate Warrior was a tremendous character for WWF, WWE, um, certainly a Hall of Fame character. Uh, main event character, headline WrestleManias, uh, an inspiration to kids, especially when I was in middle school. I mean, Ultimate Warrior was a household name to everyone. But he's, he's passed on. Uh, he made peace with WWE the weekend before his death. I was there. Um, you were right back in New Orleans, as a matter of fact. Isn't that funny? It's been four years already since he passed away. But here's the thing. WWE has an award now that honors individuals at WrestleMania, that, a Hall of Fame, I should say. That's a different story for a different time. We're going to do a Hall of Fame video uh, coming up in the next few days. I'm not in it. Well, you're in it. Hall of Fame? They're going to re Drew Carey said he can't accept a plaque if you're not in it. But again, let's, Thanks, let's, Drew. <laughs> let's step away from the comedy for a second. Ultimate Warrior character, phenomenal. The human being left a lot to be desired. You could go as far as to say if you wanted to quote-unquote shoot, by his own public statements, his own public writing, a piece of garbage. And they continue to honor him, not only at the Hall of Fame, but now during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, they have to throw his wife into it. And I, I'm over the whole thing. I thought his comments about Bobby Heenan, he was happy that he had cancer, were deplorable. His thoughts on gays uh, were deplorable. Um, the fact that any college would pay him money to come in and speak, I, I don't know what they were smoking, but I, I'd like to see the fans maybe step up uh, there's a small movement uh, that come across Twitter and things like that from time to time. But I'd like to see the people that were so adamant about Mueller abusing women to maybe look at ultimate war. And again, rumors 
and secondhand stories. What Warrior put out there came out of his own mouth and his own fingers that he wrote online. And I think it's disgusting. I can't believe, you know, WWE has been so great to me and great to us over the years, but for what that man said about Bobby Heenan and his cancer, to present him as part of the Susie Komen Awareness Month, I don't know what was going on in that room when that decision was made. I think that's horrible. For Bobby Heenan, who did nothing but contribute positively to that company, and even when he left and went to WCW, when all the ex-WWF guys were burying WWF on television, Bobby Heenan never had a demeaning word to say about, or a negative word to say about WWF once. Are you done? That was a long way to ask the question, I guess. Uh, you didn't, no, you did not ask a question. You made a statement. You, you put forth your opinion and your belief. All right. And that's fine. I, that's the way you feel. That's the way you feel. Um, my opinion of Ultimate Warrior and having worked twice with him, um, I would say that he was borderline. You didn't know if, if, all, the, if you listen to the Sheik in more ways than one. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, but no, I think that when, and I, I used to say, let me hear the podcast. I have to see exactly if this guy is a bubble off center. And then many times I sit back and go, wow, how do you allow this? And then all of a sudden you see this corporation go, come on back. But you see, it's all about what's good for business. And But is that good for business? Well, you know what? I have to look at it this way. You talk about the reaction that Cena got when he talked about battling The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. Did you see the reaction the fans gave when Ultimate Warrior was welcome back? They were reacting to the Ultimate Warrior character they knew and loved. That's right. That's right. They were not reacting to this individual who crucified everyone, who thought he was Christ on earth. This individual was slanderous. This individual made demeaning comments. Bobby Heenan, in my opinion, I have a DVD on the greatest manager of professional wrestling. Outstanding. Contributed. Lou Albano, him. I mean, Warrior had an axe to grind. I just don't know why a corporation would make a decision to bring this type of individual back. Again, the only thing I can say is we all repent for our sins. And in that ring, Ultimate Warrior repented, basically, and even at the Hall of Fame apologized for a lot of the stuff that he did. And then when he did it that night in the ring, in the front row, I'm sitting there with his wife and his kids were there, and I'm saying, look at this man's face. It's bright red. Oh, yeah. And he I don't a, think he even he's had a towel. I don't think know? he's going to make it. He was yeah. sweating profusely even when he left the ring. So you know what? Maybe he made his last piece. And I, I don't know how you feel. I've come a long way in life, and I've learned to do something in my life. The past is the past. We have to learn to forgive and forget. And, um, but did he ever apologize for anything that he did? Not indirectly. He never came forward and said, I would like to apologize for all the comments I made about Bobby Heenan, about gays and lesbians, about food, about the WWE. About food? W eat the right thing, don't do this. You know what? I'm telling you, when I say, here's the, here's the level, was the bubble in the middle or was it off to one side? Sometimes hatred and anger as I say to my sons and I say to a lot of people that I talk to, hate and anger are poison. He drank his own poison. That's all I can say. And as far as Breast Cancer, Aware Breast Cancer Awareness Month, it's his wife that's involved now. Well, it's the Warrior logo that's all over the T-shirts. That's correct. And, and whether that's right or wrong, somebody made the decision to say it was right, and that had to be the Susan B. Coleman Foundation. Can I share an opinion with you, Johnny? Absolutely. You already did, but go ahead. I think... WWE was so happy to have Warrior back into the fold and then to have him pass away just a couple of days after it happened. Uh, I know a, a wonderful deal was put together to keep the Warrior in the company, and I think that was passed along to Dana Warrior. So I think they're trying to get some value out of that investment. I wouldn't disagree with that. And, you know, WWE, in my opinion, has basically contradicted themselves because I'm sure you own a copy, just like I do, of Warrior Destroyed Warrior. Yes, I actually do. All right, and I've watched that several times, and I'm saying, I'm like you, I'm sitting here going, okay, I, I, they just destroyed this man, and now they bring him back in. Look, all I'm going to say is, let's look at Sable, let's look at some of these other individuals who have dumped on the company and are brought back in for more money, longer time, who knows, who cares, whatever's good for business. And I think 
in my opinion, the ultimate warrior was brought back to have a last ride. And he had a great last ride. The past is the past, but then in the end, there were no winners except the guy upstairs because he never had a chance to fulfill what he was hired for. Well, you know, I used to believe a lot in what that man would tell me, that being Paul Bearer. And I tell you this, he was a huge fan of Ultimate Warrior, the person. So he had some great experiences with him. So that's to say, it's not everybody that disliked him. But like I said, his own public words, his own speeches, his own writing on social media kind of speaks for itself. And my final thought, Johnny, on that is, if Ultimate Warrior can be forgiven the human being, if the character can still be beloved, why can't Hulk Hogan, the character, be loved, despite the things that Terry Bollea said when he was secretly taped? I, I think know. they're in the process of forgiving well, him we, now. Well, we have and, a uh, I don't want to go too deep uh, well, into that. But I think Hulk Hogan will be back with the WWE. I think that what people need to realize is corporations seize the moment. Um, Terry Bollea was involved with something that was stupid making love to Bubba the Sponge, love's wife, and I don't know that we knew he was being filmed or not. Stupidity, there's no excuse for that. He got X number of dollars, $153 million for that mistake. He didn't wind up getting that much, but that's what he was awarded. Well, but yeah. But Tens so he, of millions well, in cash. So let's say he walked out with $80 million, $100 million. 30, dollars. to be honest. All it was right. About 30. 30 million? Just, nothing to sneeze at. Would you take that? I would. All right. And then when he talked to his son on the phone using that N word, look, that's a derogatory comment. Just like I'm pure Italian, I don't like being called a guinea or a wop. That's derogatory. It is. That's derogatory. And you know what? Sometimes you've got to put this in gear before putting this in motion, and he didn't do it. WWE made the right decision at the right time for business. I don't think they should have stripped him from the Hall of Fame. Because if they do, and they don't like abuse, they don't like wife beaters, they don't like people who, you know, do these certain things, I'm not going to mention any superstars' There's a lot names. of skeletons in the Hall of Fame's closet. Well, you know what I say? If you're going to do one, you do, it to everybody. do it to everybody. And I think that's the mistake they're making, and I think it's all coming back, and now I use a crude word, to bite him in the ass. All right, so you know what? Look in the mirror, folks. That's all I'm going to say. Look in the mirror. And if you're going to crucify one, you got to do it at all. the Appian Way is going to be full of crosses. I agree with you, buddy. All right, Johnny, we really went all over the place on this video about the fabulous moolah. Hopefully, Cat Lopez and over 47,000 fans on Twitter at MWF Project X have enjoyed this. We have more great video content to come. And again, WrestleMania weekend, not one, but two huge episodes of Memories and Legends with Tony Atlas. I think it's going to be great. Maybe that's Tony right now. I don't know. We check. Or maybe Hold one on. Of, Let me take a look for you. I, 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 let's take... <laughs> Why, it's Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Is he wearing the T-shirt? I don't know. You want me to call him? All right. All right. Johnny's got to make some calls. We're running out of time. Until we speak again, folks, you and yours, be well. I have to. You think you know your favorite superstar? We're gonna do it right. Did you know about Sasha's favorite cousin? What about AJ's tattoos? Chris Jericho's expensive taste? No. You need the book that has everything you want to know about more than 200 of your favorite WWE superstars. It's the WWE Ultimate Superstar Guide.